Okay, find the surface area of the top half of this parabola. So this is a parabola that opens sideways to the right, it looks like. Rotated about the x-axis on the interval between 2 and 6. So this gives us an idea that maybe it's going to be a dx problem because x values are given. But um, we'll go ahead and set this up two different ways and see if they both end up being the same, and they better be. So um, we're going to set it up two different ways. Let's look at um, what we're doing. We're rotating it about the x-axis, so I don't have a choice. I must be doing a 2 pi y dx. And then I'll figure out how to deal with my ds part accordingly. So 2 pi y ds, again, because it's an x-axis rotation. So let's go figure out our ds. So since I said that I'm leaning towards, uh, in the first way, doing a dx problem because limits of integrations are uh, integrations in terms of x's, uh, my ds must be f prime of x squared dx. And that means I have to isolate y here, which is not that pretty. Um, it's easier, much easier to isolate x here, and I'll do the setup the second way that way. But if I'm choosing to do a dx problem, I must isolate y here and then find y prime. So when I isolate y, I get this function, and I ended up choosing the positive square root because it's at the top half of the parabola. So I'm just going to keep the positive square root and not the negative one. So let's go find y prime. So this is 9x minus 18 to the half. Bring down the 1 half to the negative a half, and then chain rule, multiply the by the derivative of the inside. Now I got to square my y prime, and it looks like I get 81 over 4, and then the square root disappears, and I just get a binomial 9x minus 18. So now my ds is 1 plus that business under the radical. That doesn't look very pleasant, but whatever, we'll deal with it. Maybe we'll do some algebra. So I'm already thinking uh, maybe this is kind of ugly. Maybe a dy problem would have been easier. Who knows, but we'll set it up both ways. So now my integral, let me put back the ds in here, will be, and my limits of integration, since I'm doing a dx problem, were 2 to 6. So from 2 to 6, and we do see that we need to adjust, because this is a dx problem, and this y is causing us issues. So let's go replace that y with something that contains x's. And so we have that over here, I guess. I can replace that y with its equivalent version involving x's. So we replaced y with square root of 9x minus 18, and then we have our ds portion from 2 to 6. That looks pretty darn ugly, but let's go ahead and do some algebra. There are two separate square roots. We're going to merge them into one and write them over the same radical. So when the, once I merge them and write them um, under the same radical, I think things won't be that bad, actually, because I can distribute this into both pieces, and at least that guy will cancel out. So I guess once I distribute, that times 1 is that, and that times the other guy cancels the denominator, and I have 81 over 4. And that does not look that bad anymore. Maybe I'll get a common denominator of 4 and see what happens. So we've got a common denominator, distribute the 4, um, combine the numerator, and now things are not looking so bad. I'm going to split the radical into the top and bottom and pull out the half outside. And once I pull the half outside, reduce a little bit. While we're at it, we might as well pull out a 9, and that's going to come out as a 3. So we'll put the 3 pi outside, 2 to 6, 4x plus 1 dx. So it looked really ugly at the beginning. But after some algebra, things don't look that bad at all, because this is just a simple u substitution. If I let u be the inside, du is just 4dx. So, hoping I haven't really made uh, mistakes, because I did this quickly. u is 4x plus 1, du is 4dx, divide by 4, so square root of u, and then your du over 4 will pick up the dx, pull out the 4 and put it outside, limits of integration 9 to 25 it looks like. So finally, once we put everything in, we get 49 pi for our answer. So remember, if you're going to punch 25 to the 3 halves into your ti, remember to put the exponent in parentheses not to make any mistakes. So 
you can punch that into your TI and get 49 pi as your answer. Or we could have gone, remember, and taken this ugly boy, put it into our TI and used the integration feature, but it's hard to put that in. You might make notation errors in inputting it into your TI. This, this might be actually simpler to put in. But regardless, you can check your work and get an answer of 49 pi. So that wasn't so pretty because we were given x values. We kind of uh, chose to do a dx problem. And in the process, we had to isolate y and find y prime. And then just doing the integral by hand kind of ended up being not difficult, just busy. It was a bunch of algebra. So that's setting up a dx problem. We got an answer of 49 pi for the surface area. Now let's say we want to go do a dy problem. How would we achieve that? Because x is easy to isolate, so I'm thinking maybe it's better to do a dy problem. So let's go set that up. All right, so let's remember what we were dealing with. An x-axis rotation with this guy on the interval x is between um, 2 to 6, and it was talking about the top half of that parabola. So again, uh, 2 pi y ds. I don't have a choice on that because it's an x-axis rotation. Now my ds, this time I'm going to choose to do differently. I'm going to do a dy problem, and I better get the same answer. So if I'm going to do a dy problem, I'm going to isolate x here, which means just simply divide everybody by 9. Let's find dx dy or x prime. That's going to be easy. Bring down the 2. That's 2 ninths y to the 1. The 2 goes to 0. Let's square that guy. That's going to be 481 4 over 81 y squared. And then finally, my ds is going to be 1 plus that guy, dy. So that wasn't so bad which means my integral for the surface area will be 2 pi y and this ds version that I chose to do for this one, dy. The thing that's a little bit um, different here is now I can't use these guys. I can't use from 2 to 6 for my limits of integration, and I can't do that because I'm doing a dy problem. So if I'm doing, and of course I don't have to adjust anything. Step 3 is done for me because everything is in terms of y anyway. I have to figure out uh, what the limits of integration should be, and that's not so bad. All I got to do is just plug in these x's in there and find what y would be for that particular x. And remember, I'm only worried about the top half of that parabola. That's what the original problem had asked us. So when x is equal to 2, I put in a 2 for my x. 9 times 2 is 18, equals y squared plus 18. Subtract 18 from both sides. So I guess the lower limit will be just 0. y equal to 0, because I'm doing a dy problem. I repeat, I need to have y values. When x is 6, I put in 9 times 6, which is 54, equals y squared plus 18. Subtract 18. we got y squared equals 36, so y is plus or minus 6, but since I'm worried about the top half, I only pick y is 6. So a little bit work involved here was coming up with your limits of integration because you couldn't use what they were giving you already. The integral itself actually looks much better than what we dealt with before because it's a simple u sub, even though it looks ugly. If I let u be this ugly business, my du will pick up this y. So if I let u be what's under the radical, du will just be bring down the 2, that's 8 over 81 y dy, and if I isolate y dy to pick up my y dy, it looks like I will have reciprocal both sides, 81 over 8 du. So, so it looks like I have um, my y dy picked up by the 81 over 8 du that I pulled outside, and then I have squared a u. Now let's go figure out our limits of integration. If y is 0, u is going to be 1. That's not bad. If y is 6, let's go plug that in there. Uh, 36 times 4 over 81. Simplify that and then add 1. And when we simplify that, it looks like it's going to be 25 over 29 once we plug in 6 in here and clean up that fraction. So now this uh, integral is not so bad. And once we integrate that, do a reducing, and plug in the limits of integration, we get this guy, which if you punch into your ca calculator, believe it or not, you will get 49 pi, which is exactly what we got 
when we did it in the other version with the DX problem. So the moral of the story is that you may be given a problem in a way where you might have to do a little bit of work with the equation or you might have to do a little bit of work with the limits of integration to set up things the way where they might work out easily. For the other problems we didn't have to really do much with the limits of integration or isolating a certain variable in the equation but here we did. If we wanted to do a dx problem we had to isolate the y first and not use it in the simpler version that was given and then use 2 to 6 and through the process and some algebra again we got the 49 pi as our answer and if we wanted to set up the other way where the e equation was easy to isolate for x I had to do a little bit of work to figure out what my new limits of integration would be but regardless either way again we get 49 pi for our answer so whether um, you do it this way or the other way I would probably in this step also I would put that into my TI as a double check to make sure I didn't do anything wrong in the process and I didn't have any mistakes. If it's an exact answer, it'll give you the exact answer. If it's an irrational answer, it'll probably give you an approximation for it. Okay, let's look at one more problem. It says find the surface area of a sphere with radius r. Now we could just look up formulas for a sphere and figure out what the surface area of a sphere is. That is, if you had a ball, how much material would you need to cover that ball um, or here it looks like we're supposed to prove it we're supposed to find what that surface area is so we don't have an equation to work with let's come up with one so let's just use x squared plus y squared equals r squared because that definitely has a radius of r and I'm choosing to center it at the origin because whether the ball is centered at the origin or somewhere else it's not going to change its surface area so let's make it easy and center it at the origin now let's go ahead and isolate x or y. I'm just going to choose to isolate y. And if I isolate y, I can choose to keep the top half of the circle. Remember, this is just a circle. I'm going to rotate it to make a sphere out of it. So if I take this top half of a circle and I rotate it about the x-axis, I can clearly make a sphere and then go find its surface area the way we did in this section. So I'm going to do a 2 pi y ds because I had an x-axis rotation and I'm going to go find my ds by differentiating this guy. So I'm going to choose to do a dx problem since the y is isolated. This is r squared minus x squared to the 1 half. Bring down the 1 half, knock down the power. Don't forget chain rule times negative 2x. And keep in mind r is just a constant. The only variable here is x. Square your y prime and we get this nice little expression. Add it to 1 and put it under the radical. So we're ready to set up our integral here and put this guy back in. And since I'm doing a dx problem, let's go look at our limits of integration. The left x value is negative r and the right x value is r. So I'm going from negative r to r for my x values. That's just whatever the radius is. So if it was a radius of 2, you would go from negative 2 to 2. And I don't like this y because I'm doing a dx problem. So let's go replace it with this guy. So we'll put everything in terms of x and then simplify the enter and see what happens. Okay, so things look a little ugly, but all I'm going to do is squish them under the same radical and distribute that business. So as we did with the previous example, let's clean this up by distributing this in and see what happens. And very nicely I get this guy, these guys cancel, and I only get the x squared on top, which nicely goes away. And remember, r squared is just the radius squared. It's just a constant, so my integrand becomes really simple. Square root of r squared is just r, which is just a constant. So I'll just pull the r outside, and I'm looking at 1 dx. The integral of 1 is just x from negative r to r. So plug in the r's, r minus a negative r, and r plus r is just 2r, which will give me 2 times 2, 4 pi r times r is r squared, and voila, if you look up the formula for the surface area of any sphere of radius r, you will see that it is 4 pi r squared. So what we just did now was use the idea of surface of revolution to prove that a sphere of radius r has surface area 4 pi r squared. Very nice stuff. 
And so that's it for this section of surface areas.